If we lose this type of revenue from oil and gas, we will be right back to not fully funding education. You know, we push really hard to make sure that we fully fund education, but if you eliminate oil and gas from our portfolio, so to speak, because um, without oil and gas, we cannot balance the budget. <laughs>
throughout the state of Colorado have taken place because of oil and gas, because it's in our state. And, and without oil and gas, we don't have all of these water projects in the Colorado Water um, Conservation Board where they do millions upon millions, hundreds of millions of dollars a year in water projects. One of the more recent ones is they wish to fund $20 million worth of um, money to go out and purchase water rights for the river district, which is on the Western slope for the river district in the Colorado River. This is important to securing the future of our state, but without oil and gas, we don't have any of that. So I think everybody needs to turn around and start looking at their school buildings, their fire districts, um, we do wildfire mitigation, watershed restoration. The state water plan, for God's sakes, is funded mostly with, at, still at this point, funded with what money that comes from oil and gas. Um, so there's a lot there. And just recently in this year's budget, we swept $70 million out of funds of severance tax money to balance the budget. So without oil and gas, we'd have an even tougher time because of all the requests that come in from the Democrats and the governor, we'd have an even tougher time balancing our state budget. There's just a lot there. And the reality is this, I know there are a lot of folks that like to say, oh, oil and gas is ruining our air. It just isn't so. If you go look at um, the tower readings and the monitoring that's done by the state health department, um, you know, of the air quality standards in our state, when you look at those towers that are in Weld County, where the majority of oil and gas is in this state, we are meeting the EPA standards, the Environmental Protection Agency from the United States, their standards in our county, we're meeting it. So the issue isn't about oil and gas at this point, you know, making a mess of our air, you know, messing up our ozone. That's not what this issue should be about. And Democrats, it's time they start realizing, let's base some decisions on science, like they always like to say, until it doesn't go their way, but let's base it on science and let's not wreck our economy because oil and gas is in the top three economies for the state of Colorado. And if oil and gas goes away, you can count on it. Um, as I heard from Senator Marchman, who's gonna be on this committee today, um, she talked about, man, if we don't have oil and gas development in this state, we will be going back to not fully funding education. So hopefully they're starting to get the message. And, and Senator Kirkmeyer, I wanna, add, we both are, are obviously love Weld County um, and that's where most of the oil and gas in the state is developed. These are our neighbors, right? These are our family members. These, the, the, the people that make up the oil and gas industry are, you know, we go to church with them. We go to school with them. We see them at the grocery store. They're our friends, they're our neighbors, they're our families. I think often that the other part that gets lost in this is the oil and gas community as a whole. The, it, it's not just some abstract industry that you pluck out. These are real people who live in Colorado and love Colorado. Absolutely. And sorry if you're getting background noise here. I'm in the Capitol <laughs> right now. All good. Um, but ab you're absolutely right. And it goes, again, it goes beyond Well County. While there's a lot of drilling activity and, and um, oil and gas in Well County, we're not the only county in the state that has oil and gas. I mean, in fact, Boulder and Denver County are in the top 10 counties as far as producing counties in the state. And then you have to start talking about like Mesa County, Rio Blanco County, La Plata County. These are all statewide. And we're talking about folks throughout the state. At one point, it was like 250,000 or so individuals employed by oil and gas directly. Then you have to start thinking about all the secondary you know, and all of the other people that are employed because of oil and gas. And even it'll impact Pueblo, I mean, it, it impacts, it just, it's going to be a statewide impact that is just huge. And I don't believe that Senator Hawkins Lewis or Senator Priola have a very clear understanding of what they're trying to accomplish. In fact, as I have told people, this is, this bill, Senate Bill 159, is probably one of the most uh, ridiculously irresponsible bills that I have seen down here. Believe me, I've seen a bunch, but this one will just decimate the economy in Colorado, but it will really hurt working families. We I mean, start thinking about the steel mills down in Pueblo. They will be impacted by this and all the people working there will be impacted by this. So go so, ahead. Yeah, just just to, to piggyback off that a little bit, Senator, um, what is your sense of sort of the politics of this move? The fact that this was even introduced this year, 
you know, the governor rather infamously declared in 2019 after SB 181 that, oh, the oil and gas wars are over. It's all good. We've, we've figured out an equilibrium. And then to see uh, this bill get introduced and in seemingly out of nowhere seemed to catch some people by, by surprise. And the fact that one of the co-proponents is a, at least partially represents Weld County, such a prolific oil and gas county. Give us a sense of the politics down there and where this is going, why, why this was even introduced. Um, and actually, both of the Senate prime sponsors have a portion of Weld County in their Senate districts. Um, Senator Hawkins Lewis has um, the Erie area and parts of Longmont that are within her district as well. So those are within Weld County also. But, um, you know, you're right. The governor makes this promise. And, you know, it's not like the governor follows through on all of his promises or even follows the will of the voters. And apparently this is what happens when you have both chambers, the House and the Senate and the governor's office, all one party rule. They disregard the will of the voters. It doesn't matter what they told you in 2019. Quite frankly, it doesn't matter what they told you three months ago. If it suits their premise and where they want to go, they will just go the exact opposite way of whatever they said. So um, it's not. this is not the first bill that has gone after oil and gas. There have been other bills also that go after fossil fuels um, and the coal industry as well. But they go after them all. Um, they promote renewable energy. If you've noticed over the last few years, there's been bills that give tax breaks to renewable energy and basically piles on when it comes to oil and gas. They pile on regulation after regulation after regulation when it comes to oil and gas. Again, not thinking about how that how that will you know destroy our economy, but also every time we add on another regulation. Every time, and I'm not saying all regulations are bad, but man, we produce some of the cleanest fuels in the world here in Colorado because of our robust regulatory scheme that has been put in place over the last five years. But every time they do that, they're creating a hostile environment for investors. And it starts, it really, they're just like, why should we go to Colorado when we could go someplace else? And we don't have to worry about risking our investment. And it's like I said, I was looking through the School Finance Act yesterday and the assessed values of school districts. And if you go through and look, almost every district in Weld County, every school district that comes into Weld County or is in Weld County has lost assessed valuation. And it's from oil and gas valuations going down because we all know our property taxes increase so dramatically. But I talked with our assessor in Weld County, and she said, yeah, that's from oil and gas. And that's the kind of hostile um, investing environment that this administration and having, again, all chambers ruled by Democrats, um, that's what's going on. And it's still hurting our economy. Do you mind if I just, a couple of figures that we have here, um, and I'd like to get a response from you, Senator, about how these districts would have to make up this money. You mentioned Greeley Evans District 6, $57 million from oil and gas. That's a lot of money. St. Vrain, $98 million from oil and gas. Adams County, just one, one of the districts within Adams County is over $8 million. How would they make up that money? Would that have to come from the state? What, how would they make that up? So they wouldn't make that up. What happens with the state in our school finance formula is a portion is out of state general fund and out of our state education fund, which comes from income taxes um, and sales taxes in the state education fund. No, nope. let me back that up. State education fund is just income taxes. And then school districts pay a portion as well from their property taxes. So out of the close to $10 billion that is funded for um, school finance and education and goes to school districts to you know fund our uh, education of our students out of the close to 10 billion because i think it's like 9.7 don't quote me exactly on these numbers but essentially about um 5.2 is related to 5.3 is coming from the state and the other side the other portion of that you know the other four, four point whatever that is now 4.8 or so is coming from school districts property taxes paid to school districts so if the property tax reduces in school districts that is their proportion proportional share of funding education in the state then the state has to offset that we have to we have a constitutional amendments that require us to increase our funding by inflation and we have a constitutional requirement to provide for a free public school system, 
we have to fund that. So if the school share reduces by a billion, we are making that up by a billion in our in in our general fund monies. So that means other programs, maybe it's the Medicaid program, maybe it's making sure that there's enough judges out there, maybe it's making sure that our prisons have enough people working at them. I mean, the list goes on. That means we start cutting other programs in the state because we have to fund education. So if the school district share goes down, the state's share goes up. That's the bottom line. Yeah, no, it's just staggering the the unseen, I think, benefits of if people think oil and gas, they think, oh, it produces the fuel that goes in my car or it produces uh, natural gas, obviously powers much of our power plants. Uh, but just the sheer economic benefit that touches almost every corner of our state, uh, I think it's important for people to uh, to grapple with and understand. Um, speaking of, you know, backfilling education, another component of this is funding just for uh, local governments that, you know, in your experience as a Weld County Commissioner, Obviously, uh, property taxes on, on oil and gas operations help fund the county's uh, government. What would local counties do that are heavily dependent on oil and gas operations? How would they make up this backfill? Again, um, Weld County is in a pretty good situation, uh, you know, thanks to some really good financial prudent county commissioners in the past few years, past 20 years. <laughs> so, but, you know, um, in our county, we when we would get an influx of oil and gas revenue because our assessed values would go up and so therefore property taxes would go up, we would put those into one-time capital funds. So Weld County will be in pretty good shape, but Weld County, again, is only about 20% of the property tax collection. So if we're collecting about a billion dollars um, from oil and gas, you know, and property taxes in all taxing entities in Weld County, now you're talking about fire districts not just school districts, but fire districts, Ames Community College, all will have to figure out how to deal with the decrease in assessed value and the decrease in property tax revenues. And they'll all have to figure it out. So they'll have to make cuts. They, you know, um, it means like in the fire, in a fire district, for example, maybe they're not building that new fire station. Maybe they're not adding on or adding a training center. Maybe they're not going out and able to buy um, additional new vehicles to respond more quickly in a fire district. I mean, and again, it just goes on. It will affect your water districts, your wastewater. So sewer and water districts will be impacted throughout the state and throughout um, Weld County specifically. Um, but they'll all have to figure out how to rearrange their budgets to make up for a loss in revenue. And it will mean direct services will be cut no matter which local government it is. Um, Senator, I pulled the list of lobbyists either for or against this, and it's pages long, predominantly opposing it. Um, a handful yeah. monitoring. And of course, we know that the usual suspects are supporting it, like the Sierra Club and I think the County of Boulder. I mean, there, there, there are a handful that are supporting it. What has surprised me, though, um, and I'm just curious on your take on this, I haven't seen school districts right, coming out and opposing this, knowing what's going to happen to to some of their funds. Does that surprise you at all? It does to some extent, um, but, uh, you know, I'm not sure that they all understand it. And I think in their minds that, well, you know, if we don't collect that property tax revenue, the state just has to backfill. But what they should be talking about is just recently, we just fully funded education. We are just fully funding it based on what we're supposed to be doing in the constitution in the 24, 25 budget year. Other than that, for the last 14 years, we have been balancing the budget on the backs of students. But this year, we're eliminating what's called the budget stabilization factor. Um, if we lose this type of revenue from oil and gas, we will be right back to not fully funding education. And that's the discussion I've been having with my uh, Democrat colleagues down here. You need to understand, you know, we push really hard to make sure that we fully fund education. But if you eliminate oil and gas from our portfolio, so to speak, because um, without oil and gas, we cannot balance the budget. Without oil and gas, we will be having to put more general fund monies into education than like a lot more, like a lot more. I don't even know what the number is, but it's just a lot more. We will have to do that. And we will have to start cutting other services that are probably, you know, critical or essential services to Coloradoans. And we'll have to do that if you are taking away oil and gas from the state of Colorado. 
because without oil and gas, we just don't have a lot of things. And, and it's not, like I said, it shouldn't be about that oil and gas is polluting the air. That's not true. That's not what's going on anymore. This is truly just, you know, these very extreme environmental groups that have this goal of trying to eliminate uh, oil and gas, you know, natural gas from um, our economy. And it's just a, a failed um, theory and thought. Um, we do not want to become reliant on other countries like Venezuela, um, you know, to get our oil and gas from because our prices will go up in gas and it will affect everybody in their normal day-to-day -day operations of their own household. Um, I have one last question and we'll let Jake um, sure. wrap it up for us. But um, what have you heard? I, there's got to be some disappointment in Weld County with um, having representative or senators there, but representation at the legislature that is going to cripple it. There's um, there are a lot of folks that are pretty upset. Um, the thing is, Senator Priola is term limited, so he can't run for reelection. I think if he were running for reelection, he wouldn't get reelected just from my conversations and um, the number of emails I've been receiving. Um, and with uh, Senator Hawkins Lewis, I know that she's going to have an opponent um, from someone here who lives in Weld County. And so maybe it helps her start thinking about what she's going to do. I, I kind of doubt it because I think she feels pretty safe in her seat. But I think people are really starting to wake up again saying, wait, this this is just wrong. And it shouldn't just be Weld County. I mean, what I am hearing about the bill, it's not just Senator Roberts, who is a Democrat um, from Northwest Colorado, from Frisco, I believe is where he lives. Um, but also, like I was saying, Senator Marchman, to her credit, has realized that this will greatly um, put a challenge in front of us to fully fund education. And I believe she's going to vote no on the bill as well. So hopefully they're starting to wake up to this. But the thing is, 159 is just the tip of the iceberg. They've got 165 and 166 following it, and they will be just as damaging to our oil and gas, um, our fossil fuel economy here in Colorado. Yeah, uh, we're coming up here on time, and I want to be respectful of your time as well, Senator. Uh, yeah. But just sort of yeah, you tease, get to committee. <laughs> you, you tease that little bit about you know 165. This sort of seasonal oil and gas ban is very much a live proposition. Um, and regardless of what happens with 159, there are, are always the threat of ballot initiatives from environmental groups to basically do the same exact thing. Uh, what would be just sort of your final remarks to our listeners? What what would you impart on them and leave them with on the importance of you know standing guard and, and recognizing the importance of Colorado oil and gas? Thanks. I'm trying to move here because there's a tour <laughs> This is what you get when you get a lot, you know, she's doing her day job oh, right, right now. <laughs> a live show. Yeah, exactly. I would just say. I would just say again, um, I know a lot of people always want to zero this in and saying that this would just impact Weld County. It's not Weld County. It's not just Weld County. It's the entire state. And it's it's probably your neighbors. If it's not your family, it's probably your neighbors and people who live in your community. It will impact your school districts. Um, regardless, if you live in Denver or if you live in Dove Creek or Montrose or Cortez or Sedgwick, it will impact you everywhere throughout the state. Oil and gas is in our top three economies in the state of Colorado. We get a lot of not only property taxes, but severance, tax, severance taxes and federal mineral lease royalties from oil and gas that impact the budget dramatically. But the biggest impact will be to education. And we will go back to the point where we aren't funding education to the level that we're required to. We'll come up with, they will come up with even more gimmicks to not fund education. So it will impact every child, every student that is in a school anywhere in Colorado. That's what we all need to be thinking about how greatly this will impact Colorado. Senator Kirkmeyer, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate the fact that you took time with us today to talk about SB 159, an important topic for the entire state of Colorado. Yeah, absolutely. That was a great episode. Um, Amy, what were your big takeaways that you'd like to leave the listeners of PowerGab with for this episode? You know, it's funny, um, and I've actually been instructed I'm not supposed to write during the while we're doing the show, but I did anyway, <laughs> just goes to show you I don't take direction very well. But there there are a couple of things, Jake. One, I, I had always, um, coming from Weld County, I'd always thought about Weld County, the impact on Weld County. But Senator Kirkmeyer was emphatic about the fact that this is a Colorado problem. This, that banning oil and gas is going to 
affect the entire state. That was number one. Number two is the impact on education. That's going to be huge. If you like your local school, um, you might want to um, start weighing in on SB 159. So there was that. The other thing is, and this was sort of what struck me as I was thinking about it, it reflects such a pessimistic view of the world that um, we can't somehow responsibly develop oil and gas in Colorado, yet we already have, as Senator Kirkmeyer pointed out, all of, you know, all of our air quality is, is very good, especially around um, where we develop oil and gas. So it's pessimistic and it's um, a really negative view of the world that the sponsors have to ban it. So, of course, I always lead with this. Well, you know, if they're going to ban it, you better get your generator. <laughs> <laughs> it's become the official power gap tagline. Uh, but yeah, th that does it for uh, our episode this week. Uh, if you like what you heard, uh, feel free to head over to IITV on YouTube to check out our back catalog of all the other episodes. We release a new one every single week. Um, so we never leave you guys waiting. You can also check us out on Spotify and iTunes, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want to engage with us, suggest topics, guests, uh, future show ideas, we always love hearing from you guys. So uh, feel free to send those to info at powergap.org. But until next week, we'll see you guys. Hey, Power Gab listeners, just a quick update here. Uh, shortly after we wrapped up our interview with Senator Kirkmeyer, actually a few hours later, in fact, the Senate Agriculture and Natural Resources Committee actually voted to kill SB 159. So the oil and gas ban bill that we talked about is officially dead for the session. Uh, we had two Democratic senators join over with uh, all the Republicans to vote it down on 5-2 lines. Um, so that is officially a moot point for the year, but it is not a moot point for Colorado politics, as we discussed in our interview, because this effort uh, was just going to keep coming back. And there are a host of other bills floating out there. SB 165, we talked about, is still a live proposition. So uh, this very much is still a key issue in Colorado politics and for energy policy in the state, and we will be keeping track of it. Uh, until next week, we'll see you.